The 10,000 metres is not too far away. Six and a quarter miles in old-fashioned money. We have an absolutely loaded field, we really do. There was Mohamed Ahmad, he made history taking a bronze for the Canadians in the five. A sensational lineup of Ethiopians and Kenyans and athletes from the United States in the mix. Watch for Joshua Cheptegei, who so often hits the front in big races. He's bidding to become Uganda's first world champion. That's Moeen, the former European marathon record holder. There's Cheptegei, reigning world cross-country champion, won Zurich and in Prefontein. And he's really ballsy, Cheptegei. He thinks nothing of going to the front early and just hanging his head out there, rather like Timothy Cherriot just did, to marvellous effect in the men's 15. Brilliant team of Ethiopians. Hagos Gevli-Hewitt won the trials. He's got three global medals over the 5,000 metres, but steps up here to the 10. Watch out as well for Ronex Capruto. He's the second fastest man in history on the roads over 10k. Hassan Chani completes the lineup. Asian Games champion last year in Jakarta. Big field of 21 men. Well, three men have shared the last 11 world titles over 10,000 metres. Haile Gabri Selassie, Kenanisa Bekele and Mo Farah. The two Ethiopians and the Briton having a massive period of dominance. But now that Farah is concentrating on the roads along with Bekele, and Bekele just went very close to Eliud Kipchoge's world record, so still running well, the Ethiopian. Now that those two are on the roads, there's a massive, massive opportunity for, night, for tonight for one of these men to potentially become a national hero. It's a bit like a football crowd in this evening. The atmosphere is sensational. Great shots from our director. They're dancing like it's a party. Well, in Ethiopia and Kenya, sporting glory doesn't get much bigger than in the 10,000 metres. That's Ronex Capruto, one of the fastest men in history on the roads over 10k. Joshua Cheptegei, the reigning world cross-country champion. There are loads of Ugandan flags in tonight as well. They were celebrating with Nakai winning the women's 800 metres. What a games it would be for the proud East African nation if they were to secure another gold medal. Rogers Quemoy on the inside, Commonwealth bronze medalist last year. He's a former world junior champion. Church here of USA and then Leonard Career. Hagos Gebri Hewitt. Is he the marginal favourite? He's the fastest in the world this year. He won the Ethiopian trials. He would have had a good chance in the 5,000 but wanted to focus on the 10. Mohamed Ahmed ran really well for a bronze in the 5,000. Bellew's just gone through shot. Watch out as well for the Eritrean. That was Aaron Kifle and Joshua Cheptegei. The reigning Commonwealth champion over five and 10,000 metres. He's had a couple of big wins on the Diamond League this year. Lopez Lemong is very, very fast at the end if it gets tactical. An awful four years worth of injuries. That was Alex Corio just going through shot. And then Yomif Kajelcha. You'll always be able to spot him. He's one of the tallest Ethiopian athletes we've ever seen. Twice a world indoor champion, over 3,000. And on the outside, Towards the outside, Julian Wanders, world record holder over the 5K. Ronax Capruto is the second fastest in history on the roads, and he's the reigning world junior champion on the track. And the second of the Ugandans, Mande, just being introduced to the crowd. Penultimate athlete from the outside. No Ugandan man has ever won this title. Is that going to change tonight? Well, if it is. He's going to have to beat an incredible lineup of Ethiopians and Kenyans. This is the final of the men's 10,000 metres. <laughs> 25 laps of the track. Six and a quarter miles in old fashioned money. Jenny Meadows, this is always one of my favourite races at any major global or regional championship. So much intrigue. So much drama, and they really, really do have to earn these medals the hard way as uh, Abdullah Mande 
fifth in the World Juniors a few years ago, decides that he will set the early pace for Uganda. So maybe a few team tactics happening there. This is a brutal way to win a, a major medal, isn't it? Uganda one and two here with Ronex Kipruto leading the charge for the rest of the field. I think this will be definite team tactics at play here from the East African nation, but it's Mande rather than Cheptegei. Interesting clash of styles. There's Cheptegei just in second, and 18 with that side pip is Ronex Capruto. Capruto ran so well to win the Stockholm race, the reigning world junior champion. He loves to front run. We've got a couple who like that, and all of a sudden, it's just beginning to bunch up a little bit. So, fascinating team tactics at play here, and Bellew, he's run such a fast half marathon with Hagos Gebli Hewitt, his more decorated compatriot, just behind him. Uganda one and two, Kenya three and four, Ethiopia five and six, and nobody's really prepared to make a move just yet. No, they've just ticked off a few laps now, haven't they? Four laps gone. We've not seen any real surges to the front. A lot of these guys will just be hoping to tick a few more laps off. It's a long way, of course, to lead in a 10,000 metres. We saw Helena Beery really dominant over the 5,000, but she really had the class. She'd run a couple of seconds faster than anybody else in the world, but this one is a really, really interesting one. Rob, I know we were doing some statistics, trying to work out, you know, who the favourites are for this one. But as we went down the list, so many titles that all of these competitors have won, whether that be at Pan American Championships, Mediterranean Games Championships, Europeans, African champs, all of these guys are great competitors and it's just one of those mouth-watering prospects. What will we see unfold over the next 20 laps or so? It's a really stellar lineup. As they come round now, two kilometres just inside 5.30, so they're inside 27.30 pace, so it's not surprising that they have dropped one or two, and we're heading towards uh, the single-file setup. You have to give credit to the East Africans who are in the crowd. They are contributing to an incredible atmosphere here on the final night, and that's been a feature of all the distance races throughout the championship, and... It's a slight change from what we're used to. We're normally expecting the the sprinters, the you know the headline grabbing 100 and 200 metre runners, the men and women to to get the crowd ignited. But here, it's been just as good, if not better, on the three steeple, the middle distance, and especially the five and ten. It's a wonderful atmosphere tonight here. It is. Distance running is a national sport for so many of these nations. I was looking at all the multiple win winners over the years. So we're really looking forward to seeing how this one pans out. Just wondering whether Ethiopia can sweep the medal table in Doha. The Ethiopians hold four of the five quickest times in the field in this men's 10,000 metres. Ethiopia have won 18 medals at this championships versus 16 for Kenya. And Kenya's last victory in this championships was 18 years ago now in Edmonton, all the way back to 2001. It was, I remember that. It was Charles Kamafi who denied Haile Gabri Selassie a fifth successive 10,000 metre crown. There's one of the Burundians just struggling with the pace. We had a few automatic qualifiers here by virtue of finishing in the top 15 at the World Cross Country Championships. So, one by one, it's Cruzera coming off the back, who was 11th in the World Cross. But what about this from Ronex Kipruto? And all of a sudden, we've got a little bit bunched again. Joshua Cheptegei leads. Capruto had a little go over the front, and now he's decided to settle back down alongside the double Commonwealth champion from Uganda. Kwemoy is in third, Bailiu, Gebli Hewitt, and Yomif Kajelcha in that lead pack. And you could see a few elbows going out there. They have slowed. And you've always got to be careful about clipping heels when the pace has been fast and then the field, concertina back together again. And that's what's happening here as we come round now. And another little nudge there from Kifle, the Eritrean, as we come round now with 16 to go. 
Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Cabruto, his move looked quite dominant, and now he's just found himself back in second position. I thought he was trying to push it on, just trying to get rid of a few of these bodies, but uh, everyone's still there at this moment in time. Well, the other Ugandan who was setting the pace early on, Abdullah Mandi, has been spat out the back. We've lost a few athletes, actually. Five or six have become detached as Cheptegei keeps pouring it on here. Look at this from the two Kenyans. Kipruto says to Kwemoy, OK, you share the load this time. And they're beginning to wind this up again. They weren't happy with the fact that the pace had slowed and Bellew, this brilliant half-marathon runner, moves through into third with Cheptegei, the World Cross Country champion, in fourth, and Higos Gebli hewitt the brilliant 5,000-metre runner, making his major championship debut over the 10. He's close behind in fifth place. All the big boys are poised here to cover the move. And this big group is splintering again. Ahmed just put a little shove in the back of one of the Americans. Kifle's just about holding on, so too Kripa, the Italian. But we've got a group of about a dozen now pulling away from all the rest. Well, I'm just watching Ronex Karikchou there in second position. He's still only 19 years of age. He's the world junior 10,000 metre champion. And he seems to be giving all the signals and the demands. He almost forced his um, Kenyan teammate to the front there. Just really interesting to see how this one pans out. Well, like you say, Rob, there's still about a dozen there. This pace is very, very steady for a lot of them. We actually had seven men two years ago in 2017 break 27 minutes in that final. Prior to that, only three men had ever broken that mark in a World Championship final. I would probably say we're not going to get over under 27 minutes here unless the pace picks up at some point. The two Kenyans sharing the duties here, acting like unofficial pacemakers for all the rest, as Bailey comes round and past Joshua Cheptegei. And Cheptegei loves leading, but hasn't been able to do so here. He's now tucked into fifth with two of the three Ethiopians tracking this pair of Kenyan youngsters working so well together at the front. It's just a shade outside, 27-minute pace at the moment, and I suspect this might get quicker as the second half of the race unfolds. Yeah, this pace is definitely getting shared now between Karitsu and Kenboy, and the Ethiopians are following in third and fourth position. So we've just gone through the 5,000 metre point. Halfway. One by one, they are being spat out the back here. Ronex Capruto is the reigning world junior champion. Alex Corio trying to get in the mix. The Kenyan just towards the back of that group. The two Americans are hanging on valiantly there. And little by little, we're whittling this big field away. It's Leonard Correa who's gone out the back, so too Moeen. Moeen was the former European marathon record holder until Mo Farah beat his time in Chicago last year. Farah, the three-time 10,000-metre champion, but not here, so a new name will be etched into 10,000-metre history here. 11 laps to go. This teenager turns 20 in around about a week's time, still at the moment the reigning world junior champion. He leads, and you suspect, Jenny, that it has just slowed a fraction, which is why that group are coming back together. Yeah, Karitu's all, despite Karitu's real attempt to, you know, pull away and get some work done, everyone's still there. When you've got 25 laps to cover, you don't want to put yourself at the front. It takes more energy, of course, but maybe that's just the tactic to avoid any kind of clipping, any sort of tripping. We've seen this more at this championships, I think, rather than any other. There's been a lot of tactical first round attempts, especially in the men's 1500 metres, we saw it in the heat and we saw it in the semi-final, but not so much now in this men's 10,000 metres. They're all still there, all the main protagonists at this point, but they're all really well spread out. 
Two and a half miles to go in this 10,000 metres. Inside 10 laps. 2.42 for that kilometre. One by one, they're dropping off the back, but it's Joshua Cheptegei now, who set a world best over 15K last autumn. He's the reigning World Cross Country champion. He's the reigning Commonwealth champion over five and 10,000 metres, and he's full of confidence and full of running. But what an interesting mix of front runners we have. No sooner has Cheptegei gone to the front, which is where he likes to do his bossing from, so too does Ronex Capruto. And still no move from the Ethiopians. They're quite happy to let their two East African neighbours swap the lead and almost act like unofficial pacemakers for them. I was really interested to see the tactics between Cheptegei and Kipruto because they both go straight to the front, but only one can do that here, and they're swapping between them. Cheptegei maybe finding this a little unusual from a tactical point of view, but Bailiu. Gebli Hiwa, who's the second of the three Ethiopians there, the smallest, and the tall figure of Yomith Kajelcha, the last of the three Ethiopians, the two-time reigning world indoor champion over 3,000. They're not interested in setting the pace, but they're covering every move. They are. We've still got the dominance of the Kenyan athletes here, Ugandan athletes, we've got the Ethiopian athletes. It's really good to see Kripa from Italy still on the back of that group, just maybe getting detached now. We've got two Americans, Chip Chia, he's still there. Lemong is still there at this point. All to play for. Also looking at the Canadian athlete there, Hamed, he's still there. 5K, 10K specialist. He's got a couple of silvers at the Commonwealth Games last year. So he'll be taking really good. Really pleased that he's still banging on there at this point. Ahmed's a class act. He was really good value for that silver last year in the Com Games. Inside the last eight laps then, 64 plus bits. Kripper is doing really well to hang on. European bronze medalist last year, the Italian, just on the left of your picture. As Alex Corio, the third of the Kenyans, just begins to struggle a fraction. As these laps tick down, the Ethiopians will be getting excited. They Lisa De Sisa. Headed home, Mosinet Gedemu for an Ethiopian 1-2 in the marathon. As Ahmed now comes up wide on the outside. Kenya 1 and 2, Uganda 3, Canada 4. And Lopez Lamont, the US champion over 5 and 10,000 metres, coming up onto the shoulder of the three Ethiopians who are still quite content to let all the others do the work. Yeah, a real interesting character is Lamong. He's had a string of injuries. He was the US champion at 1,500 metres, so maybe he's still got some speed in his legs. That was a decade ago now, in 2009, but he had a string of injuries between 2014 and 18, and then he's come back this year, a decade later, to claim the US titles over 5K and 10K, and he sits himself there nicely, moving up in the pack in fourth position now. Once again, the Kenyans forcing the pace. Ronex Capruto, the second fastest man in history, over the 10K on the roads. Ahmed is running brilliantly in second place. And all of a sudden, we've lost Shadrach Kipchurch here and the third of the Kenyans, Alex Corio. So we have two Kenyans, three Ethiopians, one Canadian, and one American in the hunt for the gold, silver and bronze here in the last individual event to be contested by the men in Doha. Just the 4x4 four four to come on the men's calendar. Six laps to go now in this fascinating men's 10,000 metre final. The World Cross Country Champion showing all his strength at the moment but he has the second fastest man in history over 10k behind him. And look now at Kwemoy coming past the shoulder of the Canadian. The two Kenyans talking to each other. And once again, the two front runners just can't bear to see the other dominating the pace. This is really intriguing. Yeah, if I was Joseph Cheptai now, I'd be really pleased that I don't have to leave for a little bit longer. 
He won a silver medal two years ago at the World Champs in London, and you just see that he responds now to Kripchu. He just follows the pace, and he's just getting himself there between the two Kenyan athletes. The two front runners, almost side by side, determined not to be outdone by the other. Five laps to go now, and still we can't tell which one of these hugely talented men will be taking the title. It's just outside 27-minute pace. And all of a sudden, we are now once again single file. But look at Bailiu. We haven't spoken much about the third of the Ethiopians. He comes onto the shoulder of Quemoy. Yeah. They're playing a canny, canny game here, the Ethiopians, Jenny. They're letting the Ugandan and the Kenyan tire themselves out by sharing the front running. None of the three of them, and they are three of the fastest in the world this year, none of them have taken a turn at the front. Yeah, and that's the real economical way of doing it, isn't it? It hurts you when you keep surging towards the front. Sometimes these athletes try to do that. They tire themselves out doing that, of course, but they're hoping to really tire the rest of the opposition out as well. But just as you say that, we can just see that they're just there in third, fifth and sixth position. And I'm just watching Le Mans now. He's just dropped back to around about eighth position. He looked good two laps ago, but he looks like he's just struggling to keep on the back of this pack now. The crowd are really beginning to sense a burn-up is coming between these distance-running powerhouse nations. Kenya against Ethiopia, with North American interest at the back of the group. That's Mandate. Remember, he's being lapped, so don't get confused as he shouts encouragement to his compatriot, Joshua Cheptegei. Mandate is a fine cross-country runner, but he paid the price for setting the pace early on. Another lapped runner that they're going past has not moved out. It's Kuzira, the uh, Burundian, who was 11th in the World Cross Country Championships. They'll go past him quite quickly, really and truly. He should be moving to the outside, maybe showing a little bit of an experience. Three laps to go now in the final of the men's 10,000 metres. Chapter guy still leading. Capruto right behind him. When will the break come and who will it be? Well, we get lots of statistics on our computer and it's always every 200 metres. Well, this will be quite funny because the lead has changed so many times. Whoever is putting those data and those statistics in will be getting dizzy almost. The lead has changed so many times. But it has to increase. The kick has to go in at some point soon. And there's just 1,000 metres to go now, two and a half laps. One of the three Ethiopians has been dropped. That's the first significant breakthrough. Yomif Kajelcha is still in that group. And it's, I think, it's Hagos Gebrehiwi, which would be a real shock if he's gone. It is Hagos Gebrehiwi now. 25 metres or so off the back. He was the man the Ethiopians thought might do it. But it's Kajelcha and Bailiu from Ethiopia who are still in the mix here. Joshua Cheptegei relentlessly pours on the pace. But look who's coming up behind him. Ronex Capruto, the teenage world junior champion over 10,000. And Yomif Kajelcha in third. There's the tall figure. I first saw him in the Youth Olympic Games in 2014. He was absolutely outstanding. We're gearing up for a big finish. They will be coming past lapped athletes. And a mark of how fast this has got towards the end. Kifle is a brilliant cross-country runner. He's about to be lapped as they come up towards the bell. A great final lap in prospect. They take the bell then as the crowd roar. This is the final of the men's 10,000 metres. It's Uganda against Ethiopia against Kenya. How many times these great rivalries have played out on the global stage. Ronex Capruto in third, still a teenager, 
and look at Kajelcha. He's pouring on the pace, pouring on the pressure on the outside. So often, he's come up short in the outdoor championships. Chapter guy trying to become Uganda's first world champion over 10,000 metres. He looks over his shoulder. Capruto has settled for the bronze. What a finish here, side by side. Who's got the heart? Who's got the belief? Who's got the hundreds and hundreds of miles in their legs? And the answer to that question, for the first time in history, it's Joshua Cheptegei, a Ugandan, becomes the world champion over 10,000 metres. Yomif Kajelcha the silver, and the teenager, Ronex Kipruto, takes the bronze. It got so much quicker over the last few laps. The Commonwealth champion becomes the world champion, and he will be the toast of Uganda tonight. He was brilliant in that race. Kajelcha made his move down the back straight. The Ugandan held the final bend, and even though he's got nothing left in a minute, he will embark on a richly deserved, truly historic lap of honour. Uganda's first male global champion over 10,000 metres. And what a way to win it. Well, Uganda are having a fantastic championships, aren't they? There's lots of fans in the arena to cheer on the Ugandans. And he looked good. He was never far from the front the whole time. Looked really, really relaxed did Chep Degai. Well, Kajelka, I'm not sure whether he's too happy with that, but that's his only second ever 10,000 metres that he's ran. He was third in the Ethiopian Championships in his debut over the event. And I'm just looking, actually, at the finish time. That actually will be the fastest time in the world this year, which is quite surprising. It shows how much the race really churned up over the last half, particularly. And that's the reason that we saw the 12 down to eight and finally down to three. Wow, what a race that one was. What a finish to this 10,000 meter race. Chep Guy repeats what he did last year for Commonwealth glory, but this time it's a global gold. An amazing finish beating Yomif Kajelcha, a prodigious junior who's now developing into a wonderful senior 10,000 meter runner. Joshua Cheptegei with the fastest time in the world this year. Such strength and heart over the last 50. Yomif Kajelcha takes the silver and Ronex Capruto a brilliant bronze. Sandro Moen of Norway came home in 12. 18 men finishing a classic race.